Okay, I'd like to call the committee to hold meeting for Monday, June 20, 2022 to order. Roll call, please. Mayor Gafino. Here. Trustee Carroll. Here. Trustee Curtis. Here. Sorry. <laughs> Trustee Gately. Here. Trustee Lowry. Here. Trustee Nedved. Here. Trustee Salazar. Here. All right. Thank you. Audience comments. Trustee comments. Nope. Okay. Discussion item one. Steve. And thank you. Item number one on the agenda tonight is regarding revisions to the purchasing policy. Uh, we spoke about this at the last meeting and during the conversation, um, there were some questions that came up from the board and kind of presented an opportunity. When you look at these policies internally, and we have a few that we live by, the purchasing policy, our, our HR manual and so on, we deal with those on a regular basis daily. So presenting them, we realized that it might be good to get a refresher too for the board. Or, I mean, just kind of talk about the purchasing policy a little more in its totality. Thought we'd come back and better explain some of the questions that came up from the board. And uh, Jason's going to walk us through a PowerPoint that's going to go through those proposed changes and then uh, answer any questions you might have. All right. We'll uh, start with a quick recap of, of where we were last meeting. Um, and, and maybe to step back a little more, um, the reason we kind of took a start to take a look at the purchasing policy came up with the whole newspaper notification and you know should we or shouldn't we is there better ways so once we started looking at that we kind of took a look at the whole policy in general and just said what else can we change what else can we update or, or modernize a little um really there's five things that came up uh, i was called three main topics and then a couple secondary things uh first one being bid notices uh spending authority and service contracts or professional services and contracts. And then the two secondaries, just some cleanup stuff on the bid process and then purchasing card limits. Um, so starting with, uh, with, with newspapers or the uh, bid notification, uh, currently the village is required to post bid notices by newspaper uh, as part of our village code in our, in our purchasing policy. Um, now, when you look at the state statute requiring a notification, it just mentioned in a manner prescribed by ordinance. So since our ordinance says that we have to do it by newspaper, that's what we're required to do. Um, so what we're proposing to do is to say that the village is required to um, notify by our, our village website and then list some secondary items. So that required is passing an ordinance to update our village code, which would say um, in a manner keeping with the Illinois municipal code outlined by the village's purchasing policy. Then in the purchasing policy, we say the requirement is the village's website, but list secondary methods such as it could be newspapers, uh, industry websites, trade journals. So other things that we can more tailor um, the bid notifications to. Um, it's kind of some of the reasons, you know, newspapers, as I mentioned, aren't really required by state law. Um, so since they're kind of limited in scope, um, you know, you see circulation numbers of newspaper going down, you kind of reach more of a, a local versus you know, far away. So you get more bidders if you do things by you know, website or more electronically than newspapers. Um, and you know, they also cost, there's an added cost there. So if we're really not thinking it's necessary or we're not seeing a good response, we're kind of paying money to put it in the newspaper and not really getting that response back. Uh, the next area you want to cover is professional services. Um, so from here, we kind of took a step back and, and really looked at and tried to help define, you know, what is a professional service or what are the types of professional services that the village uh, uses? Um, so they could be anything. So basically, we're calling it a high degree of skill to perform. So they'd be engineers, attorneys, architects, um, inspectors, appraisers. Um, it could be items for ongoing maintenance of facilities, so like pest control, um, alarm systems, you know, village equipment, so HVAC servers, phones, uh, you know, water wells, treatment plants, stuff like that. Um, could be our software, uh, Springbrook, our financial software, um, city view permitting, um, or it can be provisions to help uh, services to the community. So it'd be water main breaks, power failure. So any, any of these really advanced services that we need people with a high degree of training um, could all fall within this professional services. Um, generally, we get these services by request for proposal or request for qualifications, or if a lot of these companies we, we find that we use, if we have a, a satisfactory relationship with these companies, say we've been using it for a number of years, they know us, we know them, um, prices, we check their prices, the prices are good, we just continue using them for, for new services. Um, this may or may not result in, in a contract, some of these people I'll say more are, are, are an ad hoc. So maybe for inspections, we just, we, we have a company that we use 
And when we need inspection, we just go out and we use them. We're not going out there every single time and, and saying, you know, a limited, you know, have, we have a number in mind in a contract saying you do X amount per year. We just kind of, we just kind of use them as needed. So, so one thing um, that we added for professional services um, that does actually appear in the policy, but more for materials and supplies is a note saying that the village administrator may move, may approve spending on a service vendor that are individually under the village administrator's authority, but in total, they would exceed the, uh, the spending authority. So, you know, say there was a, a number of $1,000 you know, payments to this, uh, to this vendor, but if you look at the whole year, it was $16,000. So above their spending authority, um, we just put clarification that, that that's okay. And that's allowed by our policy since we already had it in the policy related to other service to our material types. I think it was that clarification we were trying to make of current practice that actually led to service contracts. And then it kind of spun into when do you need a contract? When do you don't? And, and we're going to get into it more, but that is more like the HVAC. Every time someone comes out to look at our HVAC, it might be a $500, $600 charge, but it's as needed. Sometimes we spend $30,000, $40,000 a year on HVAC from one company, but it's because we had them 20 times come out throughout the year to do maintenance or check on something or the air didn't come on. I mean, Chief knows at the police department, we have them out at the police department all the time and they know the system. So we, it's just in its totality, it adds up over time, but we're actually, we think we came up with a way to try to address that actual current practice later on in the presentation. So now getting into the service contracts, uh, generally we, we have the service contracts for planned services or programs or kind of one-off things, but it could be road, uh, road program, in engineering, um, water main replacements, or, you know, as we saw tonight with, with EEI, um, having uh, the lead service replacement, just an, an, a special service that they're, they're going to perform. Um, one thing we did added, we add uh, in this policy since last time was all individual and multi-year contracts with the total value above the spending authority of the village administrator will require approval by, from the village board. Um, so an example would be if there was a three-year contract at $10,000 a year, we would count that as $30,000 in total rather than a $10,000 annual. Um, you know, looking at the current, the current uh, uh, village uh, purchasing policy, uh, there's a statement that says the village administrator will determine if a multi-year service contract should require village board approval, even if annual costs of the contract is less than the amount normally required by board approval. Um, so we're kind of taking that, that decision out of there and just saying, when we're looking at a contract, even if annually it's under the, the authority, we're looking at the total value of it. And if the total value of it is above the authority, then that's going to the board for approval. Um, and that's really rare, by the way, that a multi-year contract would be individually. They don't come in that often. Um, it's Dave had me sign one for IT recently. It was a three-year contract, but I think in totality it was four thousand dollars for three years of a contract, so well below my spending authority. This is always that classic catch-all. If you have like a three-year agreement, it's like five thousand dollars a year, so it's right at fifteen thousand cumulative. So do I bring it to the board? It's really only like 5,000 a year. And historically, the practice has been that if it's going to be a multi-year that's over, we typically take it to the board. And so Jason and I, after the last conversation, they said, there's no reason we shouldn't put this in there. We don't mind taking it to the board. You are the elected officials of the village. So now it just makes it mandatory that if the multi-year contract's more than my spending authority, it automatically goes to the board. Um, another area to cover, village administrator, may annually renew or extend ongoing services and fees from contracts that have been previously approved by the board. Um, so this would be maybe our uh, Springbrook uh, software, financial software. You know, they come through with a, basically a renewal license fee every single year. You know, we're not going to up and you know, spend hundreds of thousands of dollars renewing or redoing our, our financial software. So since the board has previously approved um, us using that software, we're just going to continue saying we're going to keep going it. And even if that, that annual license fee might be over the authority, you know, the board's already approved it. We've already spent the money and we're just going to kind of keep going um, as long as everything works. Um, and then here's a new, uh, and the last item is a new uh, kind of thing we've added to the uh, policy from last time. We're saying each, each year staff is going to provide the board a list of ongoing professional services that the village is utilizing where the total annual expend is expected to exceed the village administrator's spending authority. So what we would expect is 
you know, probably around the budget time, maybe if we pass the budget the first meeting in May, maybe we'll come back the second meeting in May and provide the board a list saying, over this next budget year, we expect these vendors to be over $25,000. So then we essentially, we'd, we'd uh, provide you guys a, um, you know, kind of a pre-authorized, you know, here, here are the people we do business with, this is how much work we anticipate to spend with them and ask for your blessing for that. The spending authority. Um, previously, we at the last meeting we talked about uh, increasing the spending authority from the, the less than or up to fifteen thousand dollars to up to twenty five thousand dollars for the village administrator. Um, we mentioned we looked at some of the uh, surrounding communities, kind of with the exceptions of Geneva at twenty thousand, Montgomery at twenty thousand, and Sugar Grove at five thousand. A lot of our surrounding are the up to twenty five thousand for their uh, administrator to to approve. Um, and I made, we also made a note here, you know, as I mentioned earlier in this last slide, when looking at multi-year contracts, we're taking the total value of the contract for, for kind of the spending authority rather than just what the single year is. Um, so the little uh, <coughs> flowchart we have here is you know, taking an, an expected uh, item coming to the board. So it's either going to be under or over the village administrator's uh, spending authority. Um, if there's a real, so say it's everything is over, basically a bid process is required or may be required. Um, and then that goes to the village board for approval. Uh, if it's under the spending authority, if we have a, a pre-established relationship with that, that board, we may just uh, waive the bidding process and go straight with it and recommend them similar to basically EEI uh, tonight where we had the, 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 uh, the, the requirement with, or the uh, relationship with them. It was over the, 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 uh, the spending authority. So we went straight to uh, village board with them rather than going out and, and finding additional vendors that could propose on doing that service. And, and to jump on that, to explain it. So that there's a couple things here that are in play. There's bids, there's RFPs and there's RFQs. So just kind of to remind the board of bids are only required in certain situations. So everyone uses the term bids, but it's not always synonymous with what actual procurement is. So a bid is required by state law for things such as public works projects, um, public works materials and supplies. Uh, so salt, we go, we buy salt, we do the road program, that's a public works project, those are done by bid. RFPs, requests for proposals are typically done for professional services where skill and money is not the only determining factor. So in an RFP, you're essentially awarding the best proposal, it does not have to be cost driven. An RFQ is required by state law, and Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong, last they changed it, it was anytime you hire an architect, an engineer, or uh, I think it's a, uh, a land surveyor, if, the, if you've not had an established relationship with that, any of that, those firms, if it's over $40,000, you have to go through an RFQ process, which basically you request qualifications, and from there you can pick a company from that process. We have established relationships with companies such as EEI for engineering. So we wouldn't have to do an RFQ to use EEI. We wouldn't have to use an RFQ to use WBK or Rempe Sharp because we had used them for so many years and still have them on some stuff. So for those RFQs are rare. You don't use them very often. We use them to hire, um, go through the architect process for the public works building. And from there, we work to select uh, a company. Um, but so I wanted to point that out that there are, different ways. And what's not up here, and Jason's going to kind of go through it on the next slide is regular everyday purchases under my spending authority still follow guidelines internally. And then Jason's going to go into that. Yeah. So this next slide here details uh, under this current section of kind of what our spending authorities are, are lined up. And that first column kind of details out how many quotes are, are needed for each uh, authority type. Um, so anything under $1,000, I mean, we, we like to ask to check prices, but there are no required quotes to get. You just purchase those items. Um, then you move on to the next where the department director can up, up to $5,000. We, we ask for two quotes for those items. Um, then the next, the village administrator, up to $14,999. That's three quotes. Then you kind of have that next level of, of needing board approval where you're 15 to less to so up to 25000 Still needs the three quotes. And then anything up over twenty five thousand village board approval, um, you know. As, as I think as we mentioned, the state law. When you look at the state law, it requires the formal bid process in the village board to approve for public works contracts, public improvements, 
um, and the supply is over 25,000. So within the state law, there's no requirements saying kind of, you know, what, what the internal, the local uh, spending authorities are. It really just focuses on anything 25,000 and up. Anything you know, less than that is kind of our, our uh, determination. Um, so on the right side is, is what we're proposing. And essentially what it does is that is it takes that 5,000 to 14,999 and the 15,000 to 24,999 and collapses them into one and says they still require the three quotes, um, but the village administrator now, rather than going up to 15,000, can go up to 25,000. Anything 25,000 or more requires a formal bid process and village board approval. And then I mentioned there were just two secondary topics that we uh, kind of updated. Um, first, the first one is really, we cleaned up a couple of things um, really to tie, better tie finance and purchasing in the budget. Um, there were some items that you know, mentioned village administrator would, would approve or, or not approve, but review um, bid tabulations. Um, so we, we changed it to the finance director. Um, ultimately, the village administrator has the final say as to you know, kind of what gets brought forward to get presented to the board. We're just kind of you know, tying up some things to make sure purchasing and the budget and everything kind of really aligns. Um, and the second thing was, was updating the P card limits. Uh, currently in the policy, we just say purchasing cards may be issued um, to certain uh, department heads and supervisory employees up to, with limits up to $10,000. Past practice has been department heads $10,000, other supervisory $5,000. So all we're doing is putting that in the policy and really defining basically as we're doing it now. So we, we specifically say department heads $10,000 other supervisors at 5,000. So there, there's no kind of gray area on the up to $10,000. Those are the... Uh... Yeah, and with Bill leaving and Jason coming on, uh, Jason is the only department who doesn't have a purchasing card yet. It was supposed to be here. It took us a while to get Jason's name on everything and then um, and basically reestablish the way that we're overseeing our purchasing cards. So um, Jason's done a really nice job with that. Um, thank you for all that info. Um, I'm, I'm comfortable now, I think, with all this uh, information. This was very helpful. Uh, I'd be comfortable with the proposed changes as, as they are stated here. Yeah, I'm fine. Everybody else? I agree. Thank you. Yep. For very nice job. Work. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Yeah, I, I'm fine with it. All right. <laughs> Got what you needed, Steve? What's that? You got what you needed then? Yeah, no, I got good? direction. Okay. That's, we're all good. All right. No exec session. Motion to adjourn. So Motion moved. to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Same. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. <laughs>